All right, let's talk about binary and hexadecimal. Um, in past videos, our networking 101 and subnetting 101 and IP addressing 101 videos, we've we've uh, kind of glanced over binary addresses, ones and zeros, and hexadecimal addresses, but we really haven't gone into depth on the math behind that and how to convert decimal to binary and hexadecimal and whatnot. And that's because I think it's kind of a boring way to uh, start networking, talking about networking, but it's something that we need to know as we progress. So let's begin. Let's look at a little bit of the math behind uh, binary and hexadecimal numbers. So first, real quick, why do we use binary and hexadecimal? Well, binary is, is a convenient way, a central way, to represent either an on or off, or plus five or minus five, or the state of a bit worth of data, a one or a zero, where there's two possible values, yes or no. That's the fundamental unit of computing right there. Now, hexadecimal is a convenient way if you put two hexadecimal digits together to represent a byte, a byte worth of data, eight bits of data. So you put two hex digits together, um, and that allows for 256 possible values. So with just two digits, like AE or 03 or C1, you can represent 256 possible values. So that's a, a convenient shorthand for us. Let's start with decimal. And let's, we're going to do a little review on, on how our base 10 numbering system works. So way, way back, we learn about numbering systems, number systems in, in the following way. They don't call it that at the time. but. And we know uh, when we're counting, we have a ones place and a tens place and a hundreds place. So when we make the number 236, we have six in the ones place. So there are six ones. And we have three in the tens place. So we have three tens. And we have two in the hundreds place. So we have two hundreds. Let's do the math on that. So 6 times 1 is 6. 3 tens, so that's 3 times 10 is 30. And 2 times 100, so that equals uh, 200. If you add all those numbers up, you get 236. Now that's pretty intuitive to us. We really understand decimal intuitively because that's primarily what we, what we use. That's how we count. That's how many, uh, we have you know, 10 fingers and 10 toes. So it's a very natural numbering system for us. But computers, like we've said over and over again, they like zeros and ones. So we're gonna apply the same mathematical thought process to binary hexadecimal. Um, note that we call decimal a base 10 numbering system. Why? Well, uh, each of these slots, the two or the, the ones place and the tens place and the hundreds place has 10 possible values, zero through nine, right? And each time we go uh, from the ones place to the tens place and the tens place to a hundreds place, we have a 10 times increase in the value. So the next after this would be the a thousands place. So 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. So we call this a base 10 numbering system. Similarly, we are going to see base 2 numbering system and a base 16 numbering system. Let's talk about binary, by or 2. So let's convert uh, the same number, 236, to binary. There it is, 11101100. But how did we do that? How did we convert? Well, let's take a look. We have a zero in the ones place. We have a zero in the twos place. But we have a one in the fours place, meaning we have one four, and a one in the eights place. We have one eight. No sixteens, but one thirty-two, one sixty-four, 
and 1, 128. So let's do that math. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0, because we have a 0 in that place. We have 1, 4, 1, 8. 132, 164, 128. If you add all those numbers up, you get 236. Okay. Notice be, be, be below the binary number here, we have the value of each place. If, if, if these values right here are set to 1, that means we get a 128 we get a 64, we get a 32, we don't have a 16. We get an 8, a 4, and we don't have a 2 or a 1. The sum of all these values, again, 236. Now let's look at base 2, or, or let's um, describe this as a base 2 numbering system. Uh, just like we, we talked about our base 10 numbering system, uh, here each place is two times larger in value than the last one. So one times two is two, two times two is four, two times four is eight, two times eight is 16, and so on and so forth. And also, there's two values possible in each of these places. So there's a zero possible, and there's a one possible in each place. So that's why we call it a base two numbering system. And we could follow these rules, of course, to go off to the left here. So 256 and 512 and 1024 and so on and so forth. Times 2 times 2 times 2. That's a base 2 numbering system. Let's talk about hexadecimal. Same number represented in hexadecimal. So here we have an E in the 16s place. And we have a C in the ones place. That represents a whole byte of data. A lot shorter, a lot easier to read than binary. I think you'd agree. So here we go again E and the 16, C and the ones. Same, as, same process as we were doing before with decimal or binary. We have the one below here. So this is how many ones we have. And we have. 16 below here. So this is how many 16s do we have? So let's do the math. In this case, C is representing 12 for us. And so we have 12 ones and 14 16s. E is representing 14. So 14 16s. So 12 plus 224 equals 236. But how did we get from 14 and 12 to E and C again? So let's just check that out. So in hexadecimal, we run out of normal digits, meaning 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But we want to have 16 values represented. And we only have 10 numbers. So we borrow six letters, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So down here, the numbers correspond to their number, you know, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, so on and so forth. But then after we run out of numbers, we use letters. So A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So back here. We have a C in the ones place, and we said C is our stand-in for 12, so 12 ones, and E is our stand-in for 14, so 14 16s, 224. So there's our math. Same rules apply. Each place has a value that is, or is 16 times larger. So binary is two times as large, decimal is 10 times, 1, 10, 100, 1,000. Here it's 16 times larger every time. So 1, 16, 256, and so on and so forth. And also there are 16 possibilities for values in each place. So hexadecimal 
is a base 16 numbering system. A note on um, hexadecimal notation, meaning how hexadecimal is written. Um, just seeing EC written somewhere could be confusing because you could think of that as an abbreviation for something. Um, so what we do often in uh, standard notation is we put 0x before a hexadecimal value. And it's written like this, you know, 0 and then a lowercase x. And what that tells us is that the value that's coming after this, the EC, actually represents a hexadecimal value and not just a string of regular characters. So you'll see that in published documentation and whatnot in software programs. So let's practice on a couple of these, a binary example and then a hexadecimal example. This time, though, let's try working backwards. And let's use the number uh, 173. So we want to convert 173 into binary and then hexadecimal. So instead of starting from the right, we're starting from the left, the largest um, place there. And we know this place is the 128th place. There's, there's eight values here. And value 8 is the 128th place. So the question is, can we fit a 128 into 173? And the answer is yes. Uh, so we'll put a 1 there. And then we subtract 173, we take away the 128, and we're left with 45. So we need to make up the 45 in these next seven values. We need to fill those in. Can we fit 64 into 45? Well, no, we can't do that because 64 is larger than 45. So we won't use anything in the 64 place. We'll put a zero there. How about, uh, can we fit 32 into 45? Yes, we can. So we'll put a 1 there. We are going to use a 32. And when we subtract two, 32 from 45, we're left with 13. So we have 13 left to represent here. Same process. Can we fit 16 into 13? Nope. So we put a 0 there. Next try to the ace place. Can we fit an 8? in 13. Absolutely we can. And 13 minus 8 is 5. So 1 here in the ace place saying we're going to include an 8. We have 5 left over. And you can probably see where this is going at this point. Can we fit a 4 into 5? Yes we can. So 5 minus 4 is 1. 1 left over. We have a uh, we put a 1 in this place to indicate that we're including a 4 here. And we have one, the number one, left over to represent in binary. Can two fit into one? Nope. So we put a zero there. And of course, finally, the ones place, we need one more one. So we put a one there. We have one, one included. Now we have a remainder of zero, and we've represented the number 173 in binary. One, zero, one, zero, one, one. Zero, zero. So 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1. And there it is. But what about uh, 173 in hexadecimal? We only have two places here that we'll need, right? A 1's place and a 16's place. So let's work backwards to fill them in again. So let's divide 173 by 16 to see how many times 16 will fit into 173. And for the time being, we'll discard the remainder. We're not going to, we're going to put it aside. So 173 by 16 is 10. Again, discarding the remainder. So in hexadecimal, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then A represents 10. So we're going to slot A into the 16s place. We need 10 16s. 10 times 16 equals 160. 
So when we divided 173 by 16, we got 10. And we had a remainder. We had leftovers of 13. So this means we need 13 in the ones place right here, little blue highlight. So we'll look at our hexadecimal numbers. And we know that we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. D represents 13 for us. So we'll put a D in the ones place. Now I've chosen an example that has two letters used. But remember, these are actually hexadecimal values. We could have had a number and a letter or two numbers here just as easily. But they're representing hexadecimal values, the ones place, the sixteens place. If we went farther to the left, obviously the 256 place and so far. So 14 sixteens is 160 and then 13 ones. So in total we have 173 written in hexadecimal. A D. There it is. So now we've completed our conversion. There with our uh, nice little notation there. 0x AD. But really it's just hexadecimal values AD. Very convenient shorthand to represent a byte worth of data. 256 values in, in just these two short places. Very nice. And the uh, last thing to remember here, when we're thinking about values, 0 to 255 represents 256 values. So the 0 counts as an option. Remember in um, binary and decimal and hexadecimal, and in networking in general, we start counting with the zero. The zero counts as a possible value. So when we say we have 256 options in a byte, that means we have option zero through option 255. All right, so that's a real quick introduction to uh, binary math and hexadecimal math. The best way to get good at this is just to practice over and over and over again. And then check yourself with a calculator, any calculator calculator, uh, really like a scientific or a program or calculator included in a computer has a built-in conversion to binary and to hexadecimal. All right, thank you.